the ActiveX version of the Windows system should work pretty well on most systems, and it's very easy to do. But there's a slight problem. There's a massive white square at the corner of your window. So how do we go about fixing this? This method takes around 49 lines of code and 10 to 15 minutes generally to code, but it's far superior and doesn't add an ugly white square in the top left hand corner of your shape. So this one uses loops and may not be compatible with all systems. They have to be running Windows, but it is um, a good trade off in my opinion. First of all, go and insert a rectangle over the entire slide, set the outline to nothing, go to the selection pane and rename it to ESC. You can call it whatever you want, but of course remember when I'm talking about ESC, I'm talking about the one I inserted. Set the transparency to 100% and make ESC invisible. Then we're going to also insert another shape outside the um, slide and we're going to call this one render make it wide enough so it can fit text onto it if we have it too small then it will overspill like that onto our slide so we're going to have keep it quite wide like that okay that should be pretty much everything in terms of setting up now we need to go to the developer tab open visual basic and insert a new module press f4 to open the properties window and call it api then put hash if VBA7, then hash else, hash end if. In the second else clause, we're going to put um, declare, sorry, that's not declare, declare uh, function, get cursor position, il point, sorry, library user 32 and then il point as point api as long now copy this line and tweak it slightly for the second api that we're going to call which is get system metrics this time il by value il info as integer as long then copy these two lines and put them in the first clause and change them up so they're ptr safe like this whoops there needs to be a gap there and also set long to long ptr and finally we need to create the type of point api we're going to say type point api and type x as long and y as long put them both as ptr just to be safe and that should be everything in terms of the declarations now we need to create the wrappers go to module and this time call it cursor and we're going to say function get cursor x Now this time we're going to return um, the point on the screen. Now your screen may be 1920 by 1080 like mine, or it could be some other resolution like 4K. But if we take the raw cursor position and put it onto the slide, because this slide is 920 by uh, 9, sorry, 540 by 960 then it will end up flying off the side of the screen and be completely unusable so we need to use a multiplier so that we can cut down the um, position and make sure it fits onto the slide first of all we're going to get the position in the first place we're going to say dim c point as point api and then get cursor position c point then we're going to return, we're going to say get cursor x equals first of all c point dot x, but then we're going to multiply it by a multiplier. Active presentation, sorry, I spelled that completely wrong, D dot slide master dot width divided by get system metrics 
naught. Copy this across and make another version. This time change everything X to everything Y. Get system metrics one and height. Now make sure everything is different and everything matches up. This is where a lot of people go wrong. So make sure everything is converted to Y and these two match up in every single function. Now with all that out of the way and done, we have now got our wrapper. We can start diving in straight into the coding. Declare move win as boolean on the slide for your slide. Um, we're also going to dim offset X as single and offset Y as single. And we're also going to say dim move win, no, sorry, dim win cell selected window as string. Now to mimic the behavior of a window system, let me open up notepad for you. So we first of all need to, um, if we're selecting a background object, first of all it activates and then it drags like this. But if it's already activated, we go straight into the dragging. So we'll do the same thing here for our coding of the behavior. First of all, we're going to say um, sub select window and we're also going to create sub drag window and we're also going to create sub end drag now in select window we need to determine if the currently selected window is the same as the one we're trying to select to get the one we're trying to select we need to say cell as shape as our argument here and we're going to say if win cell equals cell dot parent group dot name then else and if. If it is the same, we want to initiate the dragging. So drag window, we're going to call that. Else we want to set the current um, window selected to the group name. And we want to make the group the, the first slide shape. So we're going to say dot z order MSO bring to front to make it the first one there. To bring it on top of everything else when you activate a window. Okay, now onto the dragging of the window. First of all, we need to take a window offset. So offset X equals shapes. And that's going to be win cell. Now we're going to say cursor dot get cursor x subtract shapes win cell dot left. Do the same thing for y offset y equals get cursor y subtract top. We also want to make move window to true. We also oh I called it move win. Okay, and we also want to make this ESC visible and in front of everything else. So we're going to say shapes ESC dot visible equals MSO true. And we also want to bring it to front dot Z order MSO bring to front. So that will bring everything to the front. And now we need to initiate our loop. So we're going to say do while, or so do until move when equals false and loop. Make sure you have do events in this loop. Otherwise, it will crash and you'll lose all your work. So make sure you have it in there. Um, also, we're going to refresh the slide. So we're going to use our render shape. We're going to say shapes render dot text frame dot text range dot text equals timer now in here we want to update the position so that's very simple with shapes win cell end with dot left equals cursor dot get cursor x minus offset x and dot top equals cursor dot get cursor y minus offset y.
finally, we need to be able to end the drag. When we end the drag, we want to set move window to false. Not flas. <laughs> and we want to make the ESC shape invisible. Dot visible equals false. With everything nice and coded up, we can now wire everything together. Go to insert action for every window header and select select window. From a previous tutorial, it's already done it for me, so that's fine. And we can select our window and then start dragging it like that. But the last thing is, I forgot, so I'm sorry, is to make sure ESC has an action, run macro, end drag like that to be able to cancel the window dragging. And only then have we successfully created our window system. If you have any questions about this method or you're running into some bugs, um, have a look back in the video and check if you've done everything correctly. And if you're sure, then join the Discord server and ping me and I'll see what I can do. Hopefully see you in the next tutorial. And until then, over and out.